from all around your lawn. Morning and welcome again to the GDFL footy show coming to you on a beautiful Saturday morning. Yes, the weather has been absolutely sensational this week. We're looking forward to a great afternoon, fine weather and a great round of footy coming up. Last Saturday, all roads led to the duck pond for the North Geelong Magpies and they had a very convincing win over the Werribee Central's Ducks with Jared Bryant and Jamie Pitton getting four goals between them. PJ DeSanto, another three votes, must be getting very close to being favourite for the Whitley medal, the way he's playing at the moment. Benny Burt, much too good for the Belmont Lions, with Tom Mullane Grant kicking another seven, which brings him right up into the goal kicking. In Belie, too good for Geelong West with, uh, what's his name again? Um, Dalton Grundell kicking six goals. Just sit there and look stupid, Grubby. East Geelong, too good for Anarchy. Hayden Graham booting five goals there. And Cryer, the Devils, they won their first game for 2014. Too good for the Tommy Tigers. Daniel Harrison coming back to the Devils again, kicking six goals. And the 94.7 match of the day. Yes, it was a big one. It was down at the Winchester Oval. And it was, no, it wasn't. It was down at the Ring Road Recreation Reserve. You can't fool me. <laughs> the Bell Coast Hill Panthers continued on their winning way, knocking off the Winchelsea Blues with Joel Page kicking five goals. Hello, I'm Dick Philpott. And once again, I have assembled some of the biggest names and brains in country football to eradicate, adjudicate, communicate, but definitely not procrastinate. And first of all, a little man himself from Werribee. He's back. He was crook last week, but he's well again. Grubby Cations. G'day, mate. G'day, mate. How you going? And it's great to be back. I know the ratings went down a little bit last week without me, but they'll come straight back up today. No, actually, they come up pretty well, actually, but that's OK. And the game was at Bell Post. Yeah, I know too. that. I've got it right now. I'm just testing to make sure you're paying attention to everything I tell you. And of course, the other fellow on the bench this morning needs no introduction, Alex Tadani. G'day, mate. Thank you very much for that, Dick. And remember last week, people <laughs> laughed at us when we tipped Cario, but we're Nobody laughing Nobody laughed now. at us, mate. We, we know exactly why. We had that show completely under control last exactly. week. Exactly. Without the little fella. Okay, first of all, we're going to go to the ladder now. And we'll just have a look. It's going to come up on the screen as we speak and have a quick look and see what's going on. It's uh, obviously, I can tell you now, as the fellow gets the graphics ready, Belpo is still, uh, still on top. And uh, with North Geelong, this type percentage only. And uh, it's going to be a pretty tight little contest up there, particularly in a couple of weeks' time when they clash out at the Ring Road Recreation Reserve. And then followed by Inverley, a magnificent run by Inverley at the moment. They can't do anything wrong. East Geelong, Winchelsea making up the final five as we speak. Followed by the Werribee Central, Centurions, Bannockburn Tigers, Geelong West Cheetahs, the Belmont Lions, Tommy Tigers, Anarchy and Corio. Well, at least every club's opened their account now. We're going to look at the goal kicking now. And uh, that's really getting interesting. As I said, Tom Mullane Grant really moved up the table there with his seven goals on Saturday. Sitting on top of the goal kicking at the moment is, um, I just can't quite see that at the moment. And there it is. It'll <laughs> be Grundell. It'll be Grundell. Dalton Grundell. That's it. We've got his name right. Tom Mullane Grant running second. And then you've got Hayden Graham, Joel Page, Blake Miller at North Geelong. Going along very nicely indeed. Tyron Monty Bruno, Werribee Centrals, PJ DeSanto, North Geelong, Etridge Pittman, Buffy, and Big David Minch of Winchelsea. Here we go with the goal kicking. Magnificent. What do you reckon about that, Grubby? You got any comments to make about the goal kicking or the ladder at the moment? Yeah, look, well, we'll go, go with the goal kicking first. You got Mench on 12 there. He, I think he kicked about eight in the first week, so he's, he's kicked four for the rest. But uh, Blake Miller, I see Blake Miller up there. He's a young centre forward. And, and, and obviously also DeSanto, both of them from North Geelong featured in the goal kicking, so they've obviously got a few avenues to goal. But um, Tyron Montebruno will probably kick 12 this week and he'll be in front next week. I think. Unbelievable. Well, it was a very sad week this week. Uh, we lost one of the legends of our game in the Geelong District Football League. Alan Woody Woodman, everybody knew him as Woody. He played a lot of games at Bannockburn and, uh, of course, he was Premiership coach at Bannockburn and the Wichelsea Blues. Only 58 years of age. We'd like to pay a special tribute to Alan Woodman right now. I've, uh, he's been picked up by uh, Glenn Menzies. Oh, big thump by uh, Woodman out of the ruck. Woodman from the centre thumps the ball forward. Thump forward again by Bannockburn. It's been concussed, but fortunately he is OK. Right, the boundary throw in. Woodman gets a tap down. The score. Thompson have kicked 4-1. Uh, in the centre, Woodman gets it down. A quick kick forward by Pilgrim. Right, we have uh, big Woodman and Bone, is it, in the ruck here. Woodman pushed out of it. He's still good enough to get the tap. Tapped on by Pilgrim. A bit slow. Gets a little chip kick on the left foot and finds Ronnie Pilgrim. Pilgrim now. Plays on immediately, but he's got really no one to kick it to. Oh, yes, Woodman. yes, Alan Woodman. There he is. And, and uh, oops, a daisy. Les Bone a little late with that tackle on Alan Woodman. And uh, the captain coach of the Bannockburn Tigers has an opportunity now to kick uh, his first six-pointer and a badly needed Bannockburn second goal. Hello. 
Woodman, point blank range, waltzes in and kicks his first and the Bannock Fern second. Yes, rest in peace, Alan Woodman. Sadly missed, as I said, 58 years of age from the tribute and special uh, sympathies to all of his family as well. OK, now Grubby caught up with at the 94.7 match of the day last week, caught up with Brent Gergich, the coach of the Belfast Hill Panthers. Former Melbourne AFL star Brent Gergich. Gergich, a pretty good game out there today. A little bit scrappy for a while, but you'd be pretty glad by the way the boys fought it out and won pretty easily in the finish. Yeah, like you said, it was, it was a little bit scrappy and we were probably pretty inaccurate going forward, so the scoreboard would have shown that. But, um, yeah, look, it's just, just a tight game. They're obviously a really, really good side and they're going to be right up there at the end of the year. So, you know, both sides going going pretty hard at it and a lot of pressure on both sides, so that sometimes brings us some mistakes and some fumbling and that sort of stuff. Now, they had a few players out, uh, the Winch boys, and they lost. I think they lost Kane Bonner during the game with a nasty injury. But but you blokes had a few really good players out today. Tell us who was out, and just tell us, give us an idea of when they might be back again. Uh, yeah, well, well, our ruckman in uh, Wren Lovett was out. Um, Steve McLeod and Kayla Basley all missed today, and who've, who've played probably pretty well the first few games of the year. So, uh, but luckily for us, they're not not major injuries and. Um, um, well, I'd expect probably two of them to be back next week and the third one probably be the week after, which is the bye, so uh, after that. Last three or four years, the whole season, you've been outright favourites right from the first bounce of the first round. This year's a little bit different. You're probably second favourite behind the mighty Magpies. Does that suit you blokes a little bit better? Is the pressure eased off a little bit? Yeah, well, it, it is, a, I suppose, a good good thing um, to have a bit, little bit less pressure on us and uh, we can sort of go about... Um, our sort of things, but um, you know, we're sort of used to that as well, and we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to, to, to play well and um, to play to play finals and to you know go deep into the finals too. So um, we're under no illusions. The North Geelong are a pretty good side, and they've got a lot of talent there, and we're going to have to do something pretty special to to be able to beat them. But um, you know, our guys are um, Obviously, we're going to play Bannock Perm this week and, and get over them. So it's a long year. So the key now is just you know winning, winning as many games as we can and uh, making sure our, our guys are fitting fitting well. I don't like to individualise too much, but to have a bloke in the back line, he's a, probably about five foot nine, and he's sitting on big men's shoes, about six foot six, and he just kept getting up and spawning him. Cam Addy, he's just a freak of a player, isn't he, Cam? Yeah, we're, we're really lucky. To have got him, and um, you know he's our captain this year as well, so he's a really good leader. And uh, I'm not sure if Menchie's six six; he, he might have shrunk a little bit. And uh, <laughs> but Cam is really athletic and jump jump really high, and he's really quick off the mark. So um, he likes playing on, on you know on big jobs like that. So but today it was it was, it was really good. They didn't realise Grubby was the smaller one, and Brett Gergich was the bigger one. That's in case you didn't realise that. He was sitting down, you idiot. Shut up, fool. We're <laughs> we're going to take a short break. Pay some bills and be right back up. From all around you long I'm gonna tell you how football is strong We're the best.